Hey everyone, it is Wednesday and it actually took me a while to remember what day it was. Probably because I stayed up too late last night and like I was saying yesterday, I need a lot of sleep. So anyway, without further ado, because it is Wednesday, that means I'm on my website, katiemorton.com. If you haven't gotten on and checked it out, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's like chat rooms and you can message one another and you can create forums and you can create groups and you can post and you can put your videos up there and all sorts of things so make sure you check it out um so i'm on the website and i'm also on youtube so if you asked your questions below in the comments yesterday or in my inbox i made sure to do the rounds i went to the, the website i went to my youtube inbox i went to the comments got it all and i have some questions for you as well as a question that maybe some of you can answer. I have a follower from Brazil, um, and I'm not familiar with how that works. I don't even know if it's socialized medicine or not. I, I just don't know. So is anybody else from Brazil? Because this particular person is um, younger, and she is looking to see a therapist. Um, she struggles with self-harm, but she um, doesn't know how to go about it. And I didn't know if she needs to see her general practitioner or regular doctor and get a referral that way or if there's another way. So if you are from Brazil and you know, can you please let us know and share your comments so that we can help one another, right? We're a community, that's what we're all about. So um, I hope that we're able to find someone that can offer some help. Now, question number one. My question is probably too trivial for you to bother. Ha <laughs> ha, it's not, cause I'm answering it right now. Um, but I thought I'd try anyway. Sometimes I feel I should reach out and ask for help, but I feel that it would be too selfish of me. I don't want to burden other people with my problems since they're probably dealing with enough on their own. I don't want to add to their troubles. What should I do? I shouldn't be selfish, right? I don't think my problems are bad enough, like actually life-threatening. So I should probably just keep quiet and watching your videos and reading stuff online, right? No, wrong. You're not being selfish by reaching out for help. You're not troubling other people. People will care because they love you and they care about you. And they're going to want to know that you're getting help and they're going to want to know you're getting support. And to know, I mean, if I found out that one of my friends wasn't getting help because she um, was worried to burden me and she didn't want to talk to me about it, I'd almost be hurt more that way. So know that no matter how trivial you think your issues are, they're bothering you. And it's important to the people who love you that you get the help that you need. So reach out, get help, let people know, get the support that you need and that you deserve. It's not selfish, it's actually really strong of you and it means that you'll get better more quickly. So yeah, get help. Okay, question number two. My teachers are aggravated that I don't participate in class enough. I have social anxiety and was bullied in high school and middle school for participating in class, so now I just stay quiet. My therapist on campus suggested that she talk to them and give them my background and maybe explain to them why I'm so quiet. I already signed the release form, but I'm scared that they'll think I'm just using it as an excuse. If they do, what do I say to them? So I think it's great that your therapist can talk to them. They will not think it's an excuse. This is coming from a professional. If you were just to say it to them and you weren't seeking therapy, you hadn't um, talked about your past in therapy and she knows where you're coming from and um, she knows about the trauma that you experienced, if that wasn't happening already, then the teachers may be less likely to believe you. But the great thing is they're not hearing it just from you. They're also hearing it from your therapist. And hearing it from someone that is a peer to them um, will really make it powerful. And trust me, they will they'll be more aggravated. Like the person who commented on my website below this question, um, people usually get more aggravated when they don't understand why and they don't know what's really going on. But now that uh, if your therapist will talk to them and they'll know what's going on, They'll feel better about it and they'll be like, oh, I get it. Okay, I understand. And maybe they'll even work with you more. And if you're feeling more anxious, you can tell them I've had a rough day, um, you know, and they'll be more understanding. So I would go ahead with it. I don't think that you'll run into any issues um, of them thinking it's just an excuse. I think that's kind of that negative voice that's nagging you. But if you do have any issues, let me know and we can talk about it, okay? Question number three. Hey Katie, if I tell my therapist that I self-harm, will she want to see my cuts and scars? What do I do if I don't want her to see them? I don't ask to see them. I only ask to see them if someone, because a lot of times some of my clients will be like, oh, I cut deeper than I usually did, or I did this more than I usually did, or I wonder if I should go to the doctor. If they start saying things like that, I'll ask if they would let me see it. Uh, most of my clients actually do. I've only had a couple that are, you know, no, and it's usually because they're newer seeing me and they get a little nervous and that makes sense because they have to get to know me and feel comfortable. Um, 
she probably won't ask to see them. Um, there's really no need. It might be something that you'll do down the line on your own if it helps in part of your treatment plan, but um, if you don't want her to see them, just say I'm not comfortable showing them to you at this point, but know that none need medical attention. That's what she's going to want to hear, okay? Um, and I get that question a lot, so I hope that answers all of the other people out there that were wondering. Question number four, why do overweight people not get taken seriously if they're struggling with an eating disorder? Now this question actually came from someone um, in Australia, I believe, and Unfortunately, the United States is kind of the first, I believe, if anybody else knows anywhere else that has changed this, um, but in our DSM, which is the APA or the people who put it out, the American Psychiatric Association, and they've added binge eating disorder in the DSM as its own diagnosis, so it's not just EDNOS, and even at the treatment centers that I used to work at before the DSM even changed, because this was like, oh God, like three years ago. Um, they, we already had people who were binge eaters and who were overweight and people of normal weight, people underweight. It was just a whole gamut because eating disorders don't discriminate, right? So, um, I hope that for most of us, we're not finding that they're, they're, you're not taking this seriously. Um, but I know in other countries it's harder and it's already hard enough for people who, um, fit the certain criteria to get help so it's even harder if you, you haven't changed, if the country that you're in hasn't changed their um, diagnostic manual to reflect that. And to be truthful, um, I'm, I'm so sorry that that's happening. There's a lot of online resources for you, um, like ED Anonymous, where you can talk and chat and um, it can be around the world so you're not limited by that. Um, I know that some people say that OA, the um, another type of anonymous meeting is something that's helpful for that, but I, I have mixed feelings about that. But I take it seriously. A lot of my peers and people I work with take it seriously. And I hope, and this is one of my global goals, right? I'm always telling you guys what my greater good and greater goals I have for our community are. And I'm hoping that we can leverage my channel and I can speak out about the treatment of eating disorders and we can reinvent the way that it's dealt with so that all of us realize and get the um, realize that it's just as important no matter what kind of eating disorder we have it's all the same and we can all get the help and the support that we need because we have enough negative voices in our head we don't need another one right we don't need someone else telling us it's not as serious when we know it's just as serious okay so i'm sorry um if anybody else has any resources that can offer some support um please let me know okay and journal topic. So I got this journal topic from one of my original followers and she was nice enough to send this over. And I thought that this was really cool because I like this kind of stuff. So without further ado, the idea is to create a personal symbol. Basically, it should represent you, what matters to you, who you are, what you like, what you're aiming in life, etc. It can be as simple and abstract or as complex and artsy as you like. And you can use shapes, symbols, colors, etc. to represent things. The idea is that when you look at it or recall it, it's very a very powerful way to immediately refocus you, who you are and what matters to you and what you're aiming for. And I thought that, that was a great idea and so did this person, especially when you don't feel like writing. Sometimes writing can just, we can be exhausted, especially if we're in school and we're already writing all day to get home and write is like, ah, it's terrible. But I mean, I love the idea of that kind of thing and every color can represent something like yellow flowers or friendship and in my tattoo, I actually got the flowers were purple because it represents royalty. And I like the thought that um, I am special and I am important to people. And so in my um, world, me and my friends and my family were royals to us. And I really liked that thought. And so I included that color in my tattoo. Um, so for any of you that think that's a great idea, tweet me a picture or Instagram me a picture of your symbols and let's keep sharing and keep growing as a community. I'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday and I'll be on Twitter. Use the hashtag KDFAQ and I'll answer your questions. Bye.